An array is an indexed list of values. Now you've seen arrays in PHP. But now let me tell you the difference between an array in PHP and an array in Java. When you create arrays in PHP, you can put everything in there and the kitchen sink. So you can have mixed array types. You can have an integer, you can have a, a floating point, you can have a string, you can have all in the same array. Is that cool? And PHP tries to figure out what all those is, what all those are, and that's great. But it also takes more processor to do that. And so Java is more efficient, so in its arrays it's only going to have one type. So they're going to be integers, or they're going to be floating points, or they're going to be strings, okay? And so, uh, so here it says an array is an index list of values. You can make an array of any type, integer, double, string, etc. All elements of an array must be or must have the same type. That's what's important to realize here. Unlike PHP, where you could put everything in there and in the kitchen sink, you cannot do that in Java. And this is just showing you an array, a very important point. And the main point here is arrays start with the index value of what? Not one, but zero. Now, long, yeah, a long time ago, Adobe Flash used to start with the array number one. And so we had tons and tons of code out there, and suddenly they actually got smart and realized they needed to do it like everyone else was doing it. And I shouldn't say Adobe Flash. This was back in the Macromedia days. So in that transition, they switched all their arrays starting with zero, and that screwed everyone up because they had all this old code that wouldn't work anymore. So we all got used to it because that was the right way to do it, and that was the right thing to do is switch with the array starting with zero. So whenever you're programming, you're always making allowance for this array starting at zero, and people are always making mistakes here. All right, just be aware of that. <clears throat> so they're just showing you an example of an, a double array. So he's actually creating a double array. What does that mean? These are decimal points. So zero contains that value, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he's showing how you can put different values in different holders in an array. You've seen all that before. And uh, he said the index starts at zero, and he's, he's got to say it again and again. And it ends at length minus one. Now, this is a wonderful uh, built-in method in arrays in that whenever you create an array, you give it a name. I could give my name, for example, array Mike. okay? If you go array Mike dot length, it will tell you how many elements are in that array. So the dot length is very important because if I want to iterate through an array, I can put that dot length into a loop, and it knows how far to go. And you're going to see that example here today. Just as we did in PHP, uh, we do here, we can actually uh, load values of an array by actually just giving them an index value. So let me show you how PHP, in a sense, declares an array. So what it's going to do, it's going to use the, this is going to be an integer array because you can only have one type in an array. So he's going to go integer square brackets. And that, in a sense, declares that's going to be an array of integers. And then you give it a name, values, okay? And then what you can do, you can go new integer 5. What that means is you can put only five values in there. If you try to put more than five values in there, you will get an error message because you've you know, told it you're only going to have five. Now, the reason you do that, if you wouldn't want to put a 1,000 variables in there because your memory has to hold a 1,000 places. So what you're telling Java to do, hey, reserve these five places in memory, okay, uh, so I, I can use those whenever I need them. So that's why, you need, that's why you're, in a sense, strict typing. So you're bringing down the bit size of each array, and you're also telling them how many are going to be in there so you don't put more memory space than you need so your program runs more efficiently. And let me see if you can tell me why this is an error. Oh, I'm going to set the value uh, 0 in the array values to 12 and 4. To, but I got an error here when I try to set the value 5, the fifth value in the array. I got a, a wrong answer. Why is that? Space is what? 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Absolutely. Five is not has now. If I put six in here, then five would be allowed because the sixth, the fifth value would have been the sixth value in the array, because you always start with zero, and that's what a lot of people miss. So I'm just going to emphasize that point to you again. All right, now they're saying whenever you use an array, you are always going to use this in front of the type to declare it as an array. If it doesn't see there, it, it, it see that it sees it as a, a variable. And here's an example: you're making a, an array. And here's an example when you have two uh, brackets, you're actually making a multi-dimensional array. And we're going to talk about multi-dimensional arrays. I'm going to show, show you some programs, okay? And so to create an array of a given size, you use the new operator. We saw that earlier. That's fine. You can always, and this is called initializing an array. You can also use curly brackets. And we're going to show you how to build a program up, actually loading values and initiating array with initial values using curly brackets. We'll show that to you in a moment. Yes, and that's almost like instantiating an object. That's pretty much where that syntax is coming from. Absolutely. And so you're recognizing that, and that's where all that is leading to. And they don't quite say it like that, but that's okay. These guys don't know what instantiation is, are yet, is yet. 
So here's an example where I'm actually going to create an integer, call it 12. I'm going to create an array of integers by using the square brackets in front of the int uh, value. I'm going to call this values is going to be the name of the array. You're going to instantiate that using what? 12 as the size of the array because I'm actually going to put a variable in there, but I would declare what that variable is. And that's just a variable that's going to go inside of the uh, integer array. Okay, uh, real quick, I'm going to run back to the notes and I'm going to show you a few things real quick here. Uh, here's a whole, so we showed you declaring an integer array, but don't be surprised, it's not the only type of array. There are byte arrays, there are short arrays, there are long arrays, there are float arrays, there are double arrays, there are boolean arrays, all types of different arrays. Just ever how you, and that's how you declare them. There are character arrays and there are string arrays. So there's many different types of arrays. Now let me just say one thing real quick is that some programmers, okay, do not put the brackets in front of the, uh, the type. They put the brackets in front of the uh, name of their array. And so whenever you do this in Flash or uh, Flash Builder or in ActionScript, you actually do it this way. But Java uh, programmers actually discourage this quite a bit. All right. But if you notice at the very beginning of the lecture, when we started off creating the main string, uh, hello world, we said, well, you can put the bracket in front of the args, or you can put the brackets in front of the string. Remember we said that? Well, but we didn't explain why. Now you understand that that string would be how you properly declare an array would be string brackets. Here, uh, but you can put the array on either one. All right. And Java people don't like it when you put the array on the second one. But a lot of programmers do that way, do that in other programming languages. So there you have it. I just want to bring that point to you that the, uh, that can go on either one. So if you see that, it actually is still an array. So whenever you see brackets, what are you thinking? An array. Right, absolutely. Okay, now we're going to show that you can initialize an array using curly brackets. Curly brackets uh, or braces can be used to initialize an array. It can only be used when you declare the variable. So it's in the declaration state. It can be extremely useful. Uh, for example, if you're declaring a whole set of names or something, you need those numbers just to declare that all at the beginning uh, without having to load uh, programmatically. And so what I've done here, I've created an array with curly brackets. It's an, it's, it's an integer array. I've named that array values, and it's going to have the values 2, 24, minus 23, and 4. So how many, uh, what's the length of that array? If I put length.4, the length of that array would be 4, not 5. Because how many values are in there? Absolutely. You see that? Aha. Uh -huh. Gotcha. Yeah, well, that, now that's the next question. So if I, if I said, what, what would be the uh, index of this particular array value right here? Absolutely, 3. You got it. Okay, good. What's wrong with this particular array right here? Absolutely. That's a bad one. You cannot mix types in uh, Java. You can do that as a fair in PHP, but in Java, you're, it's a death nail. You can't do it. All right, accessing arrays. So in this particular example, I'm actually going to initialize my array with the values 12, 24, minus 23, and 4, 7. I'm actually going to set the value of array 3. Now, which one am I setting to 18? The last value, because that's what? Index 3. And so it changes the array from 12, 24, minus 23, 47, to 12, 24, minus 23, 18. All right? I can also say, hey, let x equal the value 1 plus 3. Now what is value 1? Well this is value 0, this is value 1 right here. So I'm taking value 24, I'm adding 3 to it, and what would x be equal to? Yeah, these are easy questions, okay. There we go, and if you look at that, the answer should be 27. Now he's going to start getting you up on the whole idea of this length idea. So it's going to be used over and over again in Java. So I'm going to declare a values array, as we discussed earlier, I'm put 12 variables in it. So I'm going to create another, just say, what is the size of that array? Well, it's just values.length. So values.length, look at that array. It looks at that right there and goes, hey, it's 12. Next one is I'm going to do another array, and I'm going to initiate it with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How many variables are in there? 5, right? So if I go value2's.length, that number will be equal to 5. There you go. Very easy. So you're going to be using that over and over again, I promise you. Next one, here we go right here. Uh... And this is just talking about what you talked about at the very beginning, the very question you asked. Hey, in the public static void main method, don't I have string and arguments? You sure do. And you can actually do a length of arguments coming in. And you can actually print those arguments out. So that's going to be actually used to bring data in that main method. Okay?